You're watching CNA Heroes. Here's Lisa Sweet. Welcome to CNA Heroes. I'm Lisa Sweet, co-founder of the National Association of Healthcare Assistants, or NACA. As always, thank you for viewing these segments to recognize extraordinary individuals making the world a better place, one resident, one patient at a time. Please bear with me today. Today's segment is emotional for us here at NACA and I'm gonna to try to get through it without breaking down. Today we're honoring a CNA who is loved by so many. She was that CNA. The CNA whose makeup, hair, and fingernails were always spot on. Her scrubs, bright and colorful. The CNA who always had a smile for the lonely resident, who took time to make the ladies she cared for feel special by painting their nails or fixing their hair. She was the CNA always excited about new things, new residents, new coworkers. She was a beautiful person inside and out. Melissa Chapman, only 42 years old, had been a CNA in Creston, Iowa at a nursing home for several years. That's how we got to know her here at NACA. She was an exceptional CNA in terms of her work ethic, her attitude, and her compassion. She loved her residents and her coworkers. Melissa was an active member in NACA, her CNA association, attending national conferences even. She took pride in her work and invested in herself, taking the NACA Certified Preceptor course and also taking courses on the NACA Virtual Campus of Care, NVCC, earning over 200 points for the classes she took and the distinction of accomplished. She was very proud of her achievements and her certificate, which was awarded during a facility-wide meeting at the nursing home even posting a picture of the certificate on Facebook and thanking all those who supported her, making it possible. That's true Melissa fashion. That was Melissa always grateful and thanking others. Fast forward to August 23rd, this year, 2020. Melissa disappeared that day, not communicating with anyone, not returning calls, not returning texts not checking on her children. Friends and family were immediately alarmed as Melissa was in the midst of a domestic violence situation. Melissa had moved to Northern Missouri from Iowa and was engaged to a man who was an abuser, is an abuser. This past spring, she tried to leave him. He violently attacked her to stop her, telling her he would kill her while trying to choke the life out of her. He held her captive for hours without letting her leave. Melissa did file a police report which noted she was bruised, swollen, and bloodied, two black eyes, and what was likely a broken nose. Her fiance, abuser, who had a violent history with previous jail time, was arrested. Even from jail, he continued to control and manipulate her still causing her to fear for her life. She was intimidated into dropping the charges and saying her prior claims weren't true. Her abuser's bond was lowered from $100,000 to $10,000, and he was able to make the $1,000 to get out of jail after nearly killing her. Although Melissa dropped the charges, the state picked them up and she was subpoenaed to testify against him, her abuser who had been in jail five times already and whose sentence would probably be lengthy from the violent assault on her. Melissa was with her abuser the weekend of August 22nd, 23rd. She was seen with him. August 23rd, she went missing. Melissa is a mother grandmother, sister, aunt, and very good friend to so many people, not to mention a caregiver. She had a large circle of people who loved her 
and reached out and looked out for her. Everyone wanted to bring her home. The search for Melissa continued in northern Missouri and southern Iowa for three weeks. Her car had already been found abandoned along with her purse and phone near a storage building in southern Iowa, Mount Air to be exact. Melissa's body was found by Worth County, Missouri Sheriff's Department this past Monday, September 14th. This is not the way we wanted to bring Melissa home. I know many of you will be watching this and asking, why did she stay with him? I want you to know that Melissa was the victim here. She was the victim of domestic violence. She is not to be blamed for her abuser's violence. You see, domestic violence abusers manipulate, isolate, and instill fear in their victims. The abuse is about power and control. According to the National Domestic Abuse Hotline, most victims of intimate partner violence were previously victimized by the very same offender, including 81% of females aged 35 to 49. They stay out of fear, love, thinking the abuse is normal, embarrassment, shame, and lack of resources to leave, among other reasons. So today I ask you to remember Melissa Chapman, honor her years of caring for the elderly, her role as a mother, and a valuable human being who was stolen from us. The world will be dimmer, have a little less sunshine without Melissa in it. If you know or suspect someone is in an abusive relationship, one of the most important ways you can help a person is to consider how you might empower them to make their own decisions. Additionally, you can offer support in various ways. Acknowledge that they're in a very difficult and scary situation. Be supportive and listen. Let them know that the abuse is not their fault. Reassure them that they are not alone and that there is help and support out there. Be non-judgmental. Respect your friend or family member's decisions. There are many reasons why victims stay in abusive relationships. They may leave and return to that relationship many times. Do not criticize their decisions or try to guilt them. They will need your support even more during those times. If they end that relationship, continue to be supportive of them. Even though the relationship was abusive, your friend or family member may still feel sad and lonely once it's over. They will need time to mourn the loss of that relationship and will especially need your support at that time. Encourage them to participate in activities outside of the relationship with friends and family. Support is critical and the more they feel supported by the people who care for them, the easier it will be for them to take those difficult steps necessary to get and stay safe away from their abuser. Help them develop a safety plan. Create a safety plan for wherever they are in their relationship, whether they're choosing to stay, preparing to leave, or have already left. Encourage them to talk to people who can provide help and guidance. Find a local domestic violence agency that provides counseling and support groups. To do that, you can call 1-800 799-SAFE, 1-800-799-7233 to get a referral to one of these programs near you. Offer to go with them. If they have to go to the police, court, or an attorney's office, offer to go along for moral support. Remember that you cannot rescue them. So today, please join me in honoring the life, caring service, 
in memory of Melissa Chapman, CNA Hero.